Hello, everyone. Today, we will learn a new lecture, Network Layer Protocols and IP Addressing. In this lecture, the main content is as follows. First, we will introduce what is Network Layer Protocols. Then, we will introduce IPv4 addresses and the main concept of subnetting. Then we will introduce another very important network layer protocol, ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol. And finally is IPv4 address configuration and basic applications. So first, let's look at uh, where is the network layer protocol. Yeah, last lecture, we have talked about the five layer TCP IP model. So actually, network layer is in layer three. It is between the transport layer and data link layer. The main function of network layer is to do the IP addressing and routing. So it will decide in which path the, the packet will be transmitted and let the routers to do the forwarding. The main protocols in network layer is IP, internet protocol. Besides IP, there are two more other protocols, which is ICMP and IPX. So what is Internet Protocol? Actually, Internet Protocol is a core protocol in TCP IP protocol suite. So TCP IP protocol suite includes two core protocols. One is IP in network layer. Another one is the TCP in transport layer, right? So the Internet Protocol actually defines and describes the format of the IP packet. And usually, uh, we frequently mention IP actually not only refer to the, this protocol, it also refers to any content related directly or indirectly to the Internet Protocol. So if we look at the function of the Internet Protocol, there are mainly two functions. First, they provide the logical address for devices at the network layer. So the logical address actually is not the real physical address. It can be changed if they if the device moves to another network. And the second function is it is responsible for addressing and forwarding. Okay. And there are many two versions of IP, IPv4 and IPv6. Actually, IPv6 is the upgrade of the IPv4. Now actually the internet is undergoing the evolution from ver version 4 to the version 6. It is a long journey to go. Now let's look at how the data are encapsulated in each layer. Actually, uh, in lecture 2, we have mentioned this a little bit. Now we have a quick review. If we look at the data, actually at every layer, the data will be added by a header. And if it is the link layer, then the payload will not be only added a header, but also a tail will be added. So if we look at the real bit streams transmitted in the physical layer, then there will be several parts. This is the main payload from the application layer. And then add a transport layer header, TCP header. And then add a network layer header, the IP header. And then in the link layer, add an Ethernet header and the Ethernet tail. That's all for the bit which should be transmitted. So encapsulation is defined as the process in which data are transmitted from the top to bottom along this protocol suite. And it has been added with headers and tails. So that's the definition of encapsulation. So now let's look at the detailed format of the IPv4 packet. So we have said that the network layer will add an IP header. Then how long is the IP header and what information are included in this IP header? Actually, it is shown in this figure. And the information included actually are the version, whether it is version 4 or version 6, and header length. Because in the header, sometimes there are optional uh, domains. So the length is various. So we need to define what is the real length of the header and then type of service and then the total length. This is the total length of the whole packet, not only the header. 
length. And then we have the identification flex flag fragmentation offset, which is used for the packet to do the fragmentation and assembly. And then we also have this TGL, um, the protocol, the checksum and source destination IP address. We will learn these, uh, the details of these domains later on. So this is about what is fragmentation and what, how to do fragmentation. Why do we need to do the fragmentation? Because sometimes the packet from the upper layer is very large, but the lower layer, the link layer, cannot transmit so large packet. So the packet should be divided into several smaller fragments. In that case, uh, we need to do the fragmentation to cut a long packet to be some short packets. Identification helps the routers to know which packets are the same packet to, to assemble them together. And flex means whether it is the last packet. So if it's the middle packet, then the flags are one and uh, only the last packet, the flags are zero to represent it is the end of the whole packet. And fragmentation offset represent the starting byte number of every small packet. Then let's look at this domain, TTL, which is time to live. This number actually is to solve the infinite loop problem. So think of that. If the router work correctly, then they can find a good path. But if routers work uh, incorrectly, then sometimes we want to transmit the packet to from this host to this host. But in between, it may go through an infinite loop to hop, 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 and they go through an infinite loop. So in that case, the packet cannot arrive the destination at all, but it has still wasted the resources in the network. So to prevent from this infinite loop problem, we define this TTL. It means that uh, when one packet goes through a router, it minus one, another router minus one, until TTL equals to zero, then the packet should be discarded. So the infinite loop problem has been solved. And this domain is the protocol. Actually, it defines the upper layer protocol uh, is whether it is TCP or UDP or ICMP. Actually, this domain enables the receiver to know to which protocol does this IP packet should be sent in the upper layer.